Alright, hello guys, welcome to my first programming tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to create a chatbot for the Telegram Messenger. And because you've clicked this video you probably have an idea what chatbots are, but um, still I'm going to give you a short introduction. So a chatbot is basically um, a chat partner with which you can interact like with an ordinary human chat partner, except for that it's a machine. And yeah, chatbots can be helpful to do daily tasks like maybe showing the weather or something like that and um, tasks which you would traditionally do with yeah, with traditional web applications or with traditional user interfaces like a web page or a native program on your machine um, bots take these tasks into a chat and to give you some examples of chatbots which I find pretty cool um, I'm going to show you three three chatbots for telegram and one of them is this one, the expense bot I created this myself and it helps you with managing your daily expenses um, you can do so you got a list of commands which are these ones new get list etc and what you can do is you can type new um, I don't know 150 uh, for lunch so it says your expense has been saved and you can now do list oh, um, I have to type list and then a month so list November and it gives me all um, all expenses I've saved this November um, and I can do I can also tag the expenses like I can categorize them into groups like food transportation something like that and I can also do get and then I don't know October and this will give me the total sum I have spent in October so yeah this is one bot um, for yeah for helping you manage your daily expenses another one is this DeLorean bot um, what this one can do is uh, it can send you notifications so it can remind you of things. Um, this one is a bit cooler than mine because it has these buttons and doesn't rely on these uh, slash commands. It also has these slash commands so all bots basically have such commands but some can also have uh, buttons which is better to interact with. And yeah, what I can do here is I can add a notification. Um, it should remind me of, I don't know, pizza. And when in one minute and yeah so this bot is going to remind me in one minute that I need to take my pizza out of the oven Um I also oh yeah there was I don't think this was a minute but okay anyway um, yeah and it can also if I do another uh, pizza again in two minutes and yeah then I can also retrieve a list of all my currently active notifications so this bot and there's another one which I find pretty helpful The this is this weatherman bot um, I can send him I think I can send him a location which I already did it's Karlsruhe in Germany and then I can say okay I want a weather forecast for today and then it gives me the weather forecast I can also get a summary or an hourly report and yeah, I think this one is especially useful because it's more easy to to only interact with the chat than going to a weather website, searching for your city, and yeah, I think this is uh, more easy to use. And I can also add notifications, so I can say every morning it should be sent the daily weather report. Yeah, so all right, so far uh, what bots are or what they can do, and now let's talk about how to create one but first uh, you need some prerequisites so you need to have so we're programming the bot we're actually writing code so you need to have uh, basic programming skills and since we're gonna do it in Node.js you need to have JavaScript skills at least um, if you don't have such um, I'm going to uh, place a link to a nice uh, Node.js introduction into the description so please go through that if you don't have Node.js skills otherwise you're fine and yeah you need a text editor to write your code in um, I recommend to also have a server to run your bot on so you can ru run your bot on your local machine on your laptop but um, if you want the bot to be online always so that people can use it anytime you probably wo uh, don't want to have your laptop running 24 7 so it's recommendable to have a server and of course you need to have fun at programming alright so um, I said we're going to do the bot in Node.js 
Um, basically, you can do with the bot in any programming language you want. So, um, the interaction with, or the core part of creating a bot is interacting with an API, making requests and getting responses. And since it's a web API, um, you can do the bot or you can write the bot in any programming language which can with which you can do HTTP calls and that's yeah I think every program language has a library to do HTTP calls um, but for this tutorial I picked Node.js because I think it's quite easy uh, quite easy to use and uh, yeah pretty friendly for beginners. Oh, and one more thing concerning chatbots so uh, chatbots have gained a lot of popular popularity recently um, and like every messenger has their bots now um, so Facebook have introduced uh, bots for their Facebook Messenger, Slack have bots, and yeah, many other messengers too, but I think uh, Telegram was the very first one to introduce bots, and I wrote this article back in 2015, where, uh, where they have just released their bot platform, and yeah, back then it was uh, pretty hard to use and not as cool as it's today, so today it's more powerful, but still uh, the, the basics are the same, so if you're interested you can also read this article. But let's get started now. So, a good place to start at is um, are these uh, three websites I'm going to show you now. So this is the uh, introduction, the Telegram introduction to bots. Um, you should probably read this before starting, so it tells you ba very basically how they work, how to create one, um, stuff like that. Um, so this is a good point to start at. Um, and then you got these a this API documentation. You will definitely need this while creating your bot. Um, it tells you which, uh, I don't know, which uh, which methods are available at the API and uh, which options you can pass and I know like sending a message you need to have a chat ID, uh, text, parse mode, something like that. And uh, while you create your bot you will probably find or yeah, will, you will probably find problems and then you can look into this API description and documentation and uh, look how or look which options you have because I'm not going to cover everything the whole bot API but rather I'm going to make a quite simple example so that you can get started easily but if you want to do more powerful stuff you will m probably learn this yourself and you can do it with this uh, description and then there's another page uh, which is uh, this one and um, it shows some examples of bots or it shows code examples of bots in different program lang program programming languages like PHP, Java, Node, Python, C Sharp, Go and uh, yeah it might be helpful to for you to get some or to see some code examples. Alright so before getting actually into the code um, you need to register your bot at Telegram and they've described it here on the page how you can do this so ironically you register your bot at Telegram using another bot which is this official bot father um, and how you create your bot is you write a message to that bot father so you search for at bot father and then you can do a command like new bot um, if you do this um, you will be asked which name your bot should have and which uh, which ad ID it should have and I think it also requires a description of your bot and maybe an, an uh, user image and what you get finally is a token um, so you get a token like this one and that is your authorization token to use the telegram bot API and you will need this into your to put into your code so um, yeah that you're authorized against the API to make requests to exactly or yeah to make requests and to authenticate your bot alright so let's actually start with making some requests to the API um, but one more thing in this tutorial we're going to use this uh, library or this framework um, it's a bot framework and it's built on top of the pure Telegram API um, so you won't have to do this low level stuff like making actual HTTP requests, parsing the answer, extracting the message from it, um, stuff like that so you won't have to deal with such, uh, with such low level details because this uh, library we're going to use abstracts away that stuff um, but anyway I want to show you how this low level stuff works so that you get an understanding and in order to do so we're going to make an actual request to the Telegram API um, and this page describes how this can be done um, it's under the under the getting updates um, so 
Our program, sorry, our bot is basically a program that runs on your laptop or on your server or anywhere and it gets updates from Telegram through making an HTTP request. So if someone types something to your bot or if someone sends a message to your bot, um, the, me the Telegram API will post that message to your bot program. And in order to for your bot program to be able to receive that message, um, it opens an HTTP connection to the Telegram API. And in order to do so, we're going to call this method um, at the API. And up here, there's an there's an API template or URL template, um, and it says API Telegram org bot, and then this placeholder for our bot's token. So we're first getting our bot's token, which is this one. We're going to paste it here, and then it says the method name, and in this case, the method method name is uh, to to get updates. So we're doing get updates, and we need to pass another parameter, which is timeout timeout and I'm going to set it to 60 so this will keep the request open for 60 seconds. If we press enter we see the request is open so we don't get an answer to our HTTP request and if I'm opening um, Telegram now and uh, typing something to our bot so this is the bot which corresponds to that token and if I'm saying hello um, then yeah as you can see the request has been resolved and we got some JSON back which contains our message so the message was uh, hello. Um, the user which sent the message was obviously myself. My name is Ferdinand, and uh, the username was this one. And um, it also has an ID. I think it also has a timestamp. I don't know. And yeah, this is how to get or this is how to get updates from Telegram on a very basic or a very low level. We can do it again. All right. Why can't we do it again? Probably because. Oh yeah. And we, if we do this request again, it gets resolved instantly um, because it only keeps open, or it's only kept open if there are no messages available. And currently, there's this one message available, and it says on the Telegram servers for 24 hours. Um, if we want to only receive new messages, um, we need to uh, we need to specify an offset. Um, we can pass this offset parameter, um, so we can do offset equals um, and then I think uh, the update ID. Yeah we got this update ID here and if we do offset equals this update ID uh, plus one. Yeah so uh, now it will it will the request will be kept open for or until a message receives that ID is larger than this one and uh, yeah this ID I think it rep represents something like a timestamp or yeah, something like that. And our latest message has the update ID of this one. And if we increase it by one, we will, or the request will be kept open, either until 60 seconds are over, or until a message with an with an update ID equal or larger than this one will um, will be received. And yeah, there we got it. And it's exactly this one. So we can increase it again by one. Um, send another other message. And there we go. So this is how to get, um, or how to get message updates from Telegram on a very low level. All right, but now let's actually get started with writing some code. Um, I'm going to create a new project, which I'm going to call. Um, so what we're going to build in this tutorial is a basic to-do application in a bot. So I'm going to call it Telegram uh, demo to-do bot cd into it and open this folder in Visual Studio Code which is my favorite text editor. Oh, that was the wrong folder. Telegram demo to do bot, yeah, code. And there it is. And first we're going to initialize a new node project here, so we're going to type npm init dash y. And yeah, that's creating this package JSON file which is the the description of every Node.js pa uh, program and we're also going to create a file called index.js and yeah we got it here so that's the main file for our program and what we also need to do is install this library I mentioned before so there's this command npm install telegram notebot we're going to just paste that into the console and what's happening now is it installs this library into our node modules folder and we can now use it in our program. 
So we're using the JavaScript strict mode, and then we can require require our um, Telegram notebot library. Telegram notebot. All right. Right after that, we're going to initialize our bot. So we're saying um, tg equals new Telegram dot Telegram, and then the first parameter. So you can also see it here what they're doing. So this is a very basic example to yeah to set up an actually working bot. So this example actually represents a working bot which um, which uh, sends you pong as a reply if you send a ping command. And yeah, that's how to get started. And as you can see here, we need to initialize our bot and we need to pass the token. So go to the bot father again. Uh, where is it? Bot father. There is it. Uh, copy the token. Come on. Um, and paste the token here. And we also pass some options. So we're saying workers equals one. So we only want to use one workers. By default, it uses as many workers as you have CPU cores, but uh, one is enough for now. And yeah, you can use this uh, readme file to. Uh, to get information on how to use the library, and you can also use uh, the full API reference. Yeah, this page, and it's very good. So it basically documents everything you need to know about the uh, the library. It also um, let's look if we find the options, the workers. Yeah, so here's the option with the workers, and on that uh, on that documentation, you find other options which you could pass. Uh, but that's fine for now. So we initialize our bot. And uh, it is now able to get updates from the Telegram API for our bot with our token. And so now we're going to create a controller. So mm, now we first we're first creating the router. So we're saying tg router, and then when, and then we need to specify a new text command Telegram dot text command, and we call it slash ping. So we're just recreating the example now and we call it so this is the command so the actual command the user types in into his chat and we give it a name of ping command which is just an internal thing and this should map to a new ping controller which doesn't exist right now but we're going to create it in a few moments and um, yeah and then I'm saying other no I'm saying otherwise new otherwise controller so and this controller also doesn't exist right now but we're going to create it now um, and what this does is um, when a new message is received so when we get an update from the API um, the library will look for the message text and if it equals or if it starts with slash ping so if we go into our bot and type slash ping and press enter and send the message um, then uh, this this one is triggered here and the the library will call this controllers method to handle uh, the message and if otherwise um, so if anything then slash ping is typed in this controller will be called and yeah so we're going to create the controllers now we create a new folder which we call controllers and right in there we do a uh, ping JS file. Use the strict mode again. And yeah, let's look at the example um, here. And this what is a controller? This what this what the controller looks like. So there's this uh, handler me method, and um, routes are exposed. So um, yeah, I'm going to explain that right now. So let me see. Yeah. First, we need to require our um, library again. Telegram node bot, and then we're going to create a new class which we call ping controller. So, I refer to ping controller here. Uh, class ping controller and extends the class of uh, Telegram base base controller, and we give it a method which we call ping handler which is uh, referred to right here. No, no. 
Um, you'll see that in a moment. So we're going to create a method which is called ping handler. Um, it has one parameter which is the scope. We're going to use the scope later. And um, yeah, on the scope we call the send message method. And the me uh, the method the scope provides directly corresponds to the methods uh, provided here. So we can see send me message. And we also have the send message method on the scope. And we're going to send pong. And then we need to define a getter for uh, a routes attribute, and it returns an object which maps um, command names to actual functions. In this case, to our ping handler. And finally, we need to export our ping controller. So. Again, um, the Telegram router receives a message. Um, it begins with slash ping, so it calls the ping controller and looks for the me for the method related to uh, this command. So, um, uh, to this command, having this command, or this command maps to our ping handler function. So, the router will call the ping controller's ping handler function for um, for messages containing that command. And let me see. Maybe oh uh, yeah, one more thing. We need to implement the otherwise controller. So we do another controller again, which we call otherwise JS. We just copy that for now. Uh, oh no, wrong. This one. And oh damn. Yeah, and this controller should only have one handler. So. This ping controller could potentially have more methods than one, but uh, this otherwise controller will only have one method, and so we basically just override the default or the base controller's handle func, and it's going to send. Um, it's going to send. Sorry, I don't understand. So, um, if the user types in a command, our bot doesn't know which is everything else, th else than uh, ping, then this otherwise controller will be called. And by default, if we don't specify this object here, it will always call the handle function, which is okay for this controller. And we need to rename it to otherwise controller. Let's export it and, oh yeah, we need to require it here, so const Mm, ping controller equals require controllers this uh, this folder here and then ping and other otherwise controller equals require controllers and otherwise all right, and now let's see if the bot starts up. So to start a node program, you typically write, uh, start the main file with uh, the no uh, with node. So we're doing node index.js, and it says can't find module. But why? Um, oh, we created this inside the node modules folder. That was wrong. So just move the folder out there, and then it doesn't work. Uh, class extend value is not a function or null in uh, ping. Class ping controller extends telegram dot base controller. Oh, it's called telegram base controller, I think. Also need to replace that in the otherwise. And let's start it again. And yeah, it says uh, telegram worker started. And wow, we got a message because we sent this hello. Or no? Why did we get the message? No, it doesn't matter. So we can now do. We can just say foo, and it says sorry, don't understand, um, which comes from right from this controller. Um, but we can also say ping, and it crashes. Ping handler is not defined. Ping handler, ping handler. Oh, it need to be a string. So restart the bot. Now do ping. And yeah, it says pong. So we now have a very basic or basic working bot example. Um, 
yeah, that just to give you an idea of how it works. And um, in the following, we're going to implement a to do application. So we're going to have an application or a bot. We're going to have a bot which you can send to do's. So you can maybe you can then uh, you see it here. You can do add and then do something, and then we'll it will save a to do for you. And then you can do uh, get to get a list of your to do's like up here. And you can also check to do's using check um, to yeah to mark to do's as checked. And that's what uh, that's what that's what we're going to do now. Uh, but one more thing I want to show you: your bot also has a uh, web interface. So if we call localhost 7777, localhost 7777, um, yeah, you can see a little status report of your bot. And this comes from the from this API, so or from this library. And yeah, now let's create our to-do bot. So let's start with the add command, and we're just going to change our pin controller into a to-do controller. So we're going to say rename pin controller into to-do controller, and we're going to replace the pin command with an add command, and we also need to rename it here. So rename to-do, and one more time to-do controller. So, oh yeah, and the commands. To do command, to do command, maps to to do handler, and of course also change the handler name to do handler. And by the way, I just wanted to say how awesome this library is. So thank you to the guy who created it. Um, it is so well structured with these uh, routers and controllers and these classes you can extend, and um, it's very cool and very easy to use, and yeah, very well structured. So uh, thank you for the creator of this uh, library. It's uh, pretty good. Um, all right. Uh, so we just added our add command, and uh, yeah, now we need to implement it. So if a user types add, uh, we typically don't want to respond with pong, but we want to add it to do. And to add it to do, we need a list of to dos as associated with the user. And for that we can use uh, the user session storage on the scope. So um, let me see if we got a scope and then there's a method called uh, there's a method called uh, get user session. And uh, using this method method we can we basically have access to a very simple key value store where we can um, pass a key like uh, I don't know or yeah we can do to dos and what we get in return is a promise which again returns um, the value associated with the to-do's key for this specific um, user session and yeah we can use this to, to store the users to-do's and we don't have to implement all this logic like um, retrieving from the message object which user has sent the message and then uh, looking up in a map the uh, the to dos for this user, but this all is abstracted away by the library, so we can just use the scope, which is a very useful tool. We can just use the scope to get the user session, and on this session, there's this to do uh, object defined, or yeah, it's not defined, but we're going to define it uh, now. Uh, but first, we need to extract um, the uh, the message. So a user types add, and then it gives the parameter. So it gives the uh, name of the to-do which should be added so typically the user would type slash add and then uh, yeah do something so this whole thing is a message text and from the message text we need to extract everything behind or everything yeah everything after the command and to do so we can first uh, we define a variable we call it to-do and this takes the message which, which is available on the scope and from the message the uh, text attribute and we're then going to split this by um, uh, by blank spaces so this will take the message and um, yeah and will every uh, everywhere where blank space is um, it will convert uh, the the word into an array element so yeah basically it will make an array 
with every word of the of the message text. Um, and we're gonna slice one out of it. So we take the first element, which is which is the add command, and we throw that away, and take everything after that command, and again join it back into a string. And yeah, that will return us. So if we got a message which is add um, foo bar, then this will cont uh, so uh, this uh, variable will contain foo bar. And yeah, next we. Oh, we and it, this can be this uh, could potentially be empty, so a user could only type add and nothing after that. So um, yeah, we need to check if there's actually a to do given. So we do if not to do return uh, scope dot send message. And we're gonna tell the user sorry, sorry, please pass. Oh damn it! Please pass a to do item. But uh, if this one is not null, um, we can first get the user session, get user session, and then we retrieve the to do's key or the to do's object. And we're going to say then to do's maps to our function. And yeah, and uh, this to do's object by default, if uh, nothing is initialized on the session for a specific key, um, an empty object is returned. But what we want is an array, so we want an array of all the users to do's. And uh, so we first need to check if the object we recently got, so if this object is not an array, we need first need to convert it into an array, so we first need to create an array. And we're going to do this by saying if array, if not array is array to do's, uh, then we're going to return set and now we're setting something onto the user session with the key to do set um, and we're gonna set an array which contains for now only one item namely um, the reason you pass to do so this is the case when the new the user hasn't have any to uh, hasn't had any to do's yet and the second case is um, if this I uh, is an array so if the user so if we have already done this one sometime uh, in the past and now the user has an array of to-dos in this case we're gonna set the user session to-dos object to everything uh, from or the entire array or all to-dos or um, all previous to-dos concatenated with the new to-do so and that's basically yeah that's basically the um the add method and i just saw uh, we call we call it add command because it corresponds to the add command our to do controller will now handle all commands that are related to to do so it will handle the add get and uh, uh check command and we referred here to add to the add command and we also need to call it add command and the handler needs to be called add handler and we're going to add in two other handlers uh, in a few moments. Add handler. So let's see if it works. Node index. Oh, and there's an error. Oh, yeah, ping. Oh, yeah, we need to change it here to do again. Nice. Oh, it started, but terminated by other long polar webhook. Do we have now the process running? Oh, let's try it again. Oh, okay, now it works. Nice. So, um, let's do something. Oh, and yeah, we don't have any feedback yet. So we want to, uh, let's say, actually we don't need to return here. We just need else, and this one is fine too. And then we can say, Scope.send message uh, edit new to do so we get some feedback and we also can for debugging purposes do console lock to do so we're gonna lock this one or no we can mm, no let's lock this one save uh, restart and 
yeah, copy this, add do something, and yeah, it says edit new to do, and it got do something. Very cool. All right, so we got our add command. Now let's continue with adding uh, two other commands, namely the the get command, which should just uh, return the current list of to-dos, and then the check command, which should remove a to-do from the list, so mark the to-do as done. Um, yeah, we need to add another command, so when, and I really like this concept of routers, this is very cool. Uh, when telegram, no, telegram dot text command, and the command will be get, or we can also do list or something like that, but I think get is fine. So get command, uh, let me just check, alright. Um, and we don't want a new controller to be created, but we want this controller to be reused, um, because why not? So we're saying const um, to do controller equals new to do controller, and then we're going to use this one for both commands add and get. Alright, so uh, get, get, get. Alright. Um, so we need to add another handler first, um, which is called the get handler. Takes the scope. And we need to add it here. Can do get. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Alright, so what should the get handler do? It should just return the to-dos object from the current user session. So everything, or all the get handler will do is get user session, and then we take the to-dos uh, to-dos key, um, and I promise we'll return the to-dos object, and we're gonna say, oh yeah, we're gonna say mess send message. And yeah, we could just send the to-dos, but this would uh, this would uh, uh, let's say we have two to-dos. One is foo and one is bar. So if this are our to-dos array, if this is our to-dos array, um, this would be printed like uh, foo comma bar. And this is not not so nice to have in a chat, but yeah. So we're gonna write a little function which we call. Uh, we put it down here, and we call it serialize uh, list. It takes the to-do list as an p as a parameter, and what we want is our to-do list to print like um, separated by lines. So we want to have to do one, to do two, and we also want uh, indices. So we want to have uh, one, two. So um, that later when we need to check to-dos, the user can refer to the to the ID. So the user can say check one, and then this one will be checked. So we want to print our list that way. Um, and therefore we first initialize an empty string, serialized. Oh, w wait. Let's not initialize an empty string, but let's say um, uh, your, let's say your to-dos. And we can also, oh yeah, we can also use markdown. So we can say your to-dos written in bold. And then we need to loop over the over the to-do list, and we loop over the items as well as an index. To-do list dot for each. Oh. Uh -huh. And for each of them, we add to our string the item, which or yeah, which is just a string, namely the the to-do plus. Uh, oh no. Uh, the very first, in the very first place, there should be. Uh, oh damn. There should. Wait, yeah. There should be the index, and it should be bold. Right after that, there should be. Um, and by the way, for the the ones of you who are not familiar with the ES6 syntax, syntax, uh, these are I don't know the name. I think. Uh, uh, I don't know, but uh, this is a new way from JavaScript ES6 to define strings um, with uh, plain text and variables just just um, yeah just in line that you can avoid these uh, 
plus things so you don't have to write variable plus uh, quote string plus variable and yeah we can just do it that way um, yeah T and um, finally a line break so that the next one is put into a new line and then we're gonna send what we're gonna send we're gonna send this dot serialized list of to do's and we need to pass an option which is called parse mode um, you can these options you can look up these options here in the API description under available methods send method message and then um, these options are available and we're using parse, mo uh, parse mode and set it to markdown so that our markdown is actually displayed the way it should be uh, parse mode markdown and all right let's see if that works uh, wait all right yeah so we're gonna add do something and then we're gonna get and it doesn't work why does it not work um set user session get user session oh yeah of course we need to return it here return serialized uh, we remove the console log and yeah start it again do th oh do this one again and then do get here to do so oh yeah we forgot some line breaks here but besides from that everything should be fine uh, do something other or different I think and get and yeah all right we just need to add two line breaks here and then this should be fine all right and the last thing last thing is uh, to check to do's so again we need to we need to add another command which is the check command from the to do's controller we need to add it here so uh, the check and we also need to implement it check handler alright and what the check handler should do um, it should take our area of to do's and uh, remove one from it um, and to handle that uh, removing the user should refer to the index of the respective to do he wants to remove so just as I said uh, yeah if uh, to do is indexed with uh, I don't know one then w and the user wants to delete it the user would probably uh, pass or type the command uh, check and then one in this case check one should delete this one to do so we first need to extract the index and this is basically the, the same thing as we did here so we need first need to extract the the yeah the right part right behind from the command right behind of the command um, uh, and in order to do so we define a variable first which we call index and then um, yeah we're gonna do a try catch you'll see in a few moments what the reason for this is so try catch um, and we're gonna try to parse to parse something into an integer because indices are um, are should be integers but what we get from the from the message object are always strings so first let's extract the text from the message object and yeah do a split again let's just copy that from here but in this case we don't want everything um, or every everything behind the command but only the first word so to say so if the user types check one and then foo bar then we don't need this but we on only want this one so we we just take the the first um, element of that array and actually that's wrong because uh, let me see slice one and then yeah here we need to take the first element and yeah we actually don't need to join it again so that should be fine 
Um, all right, but or, uh, all right. So we parse. We try to pass that in to an int, but it might be that it's not parsable. So if the user types uh, check and then foo, this obviously can't be turned into an int integer. And then uh, we should return something like. Yeah, sorry, you you have a wrong input. I just pasted that here. Um, all right. That should theoretically work. Now do the actual deletion. So we first need to retrieve our to do's array again. To do's. Then uh, to do's maps to function. And now we need to to remove the element. We're going to use array splice. So to do dot splice splice, and we're going to splice from the index one element. And yeah, so this will this is um, in place. So this will perf uh, perform the operation right on to the uh, or right on the on the array, and it doesn't have a return value. So after executing this line, the to do is um, array is one element less, but now we need to reset it again onto the session. So we need to say set user session to do to do's, and we just pass the to do's array because otherwise it won't be uh, updated on the session. I think at least I'm not uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it won't be updated. No, of course, of course it won't be updated. So checked to do successfully will be the feedback for the user. Uh, yeah. And is that all? Let's try. So add foo, add bar, and then get. Very nice. And then uh, let's say check. Uh, check one check to do and now it should have disappeared and very nice it works cool okay so yeah we basically have our core functionality of our to-do bot now mm, there's one more thing so currently all to do's are stored in me uh, in memory so if you restart a bot application uh, everything is gone so if I s restart it obviously there are no more to do's because they're saved in the session object and the session by default is only in memory. So what you will probably want to have is uh, the the data to be persistent, so that if you restart your bot or if it crashes, um, the to-dos are still there. And in order to do this, um, there's a very ni nice thing. So um, the creator of oh damn uh, now talks yeah there it is um, full API reference. If you look to the sessions, uh, he says by default sessions are stored in memory, but you can't store them anywhere. You need to extend base storage and pass an instead of your telecom. Blah blah blah. Okay, um, yeah, but the core part is uh, you can extend this base storage class. Um, it has a predefined set of some methods. You can also view it base storage. There it is. Um, it has three methods: get, remove. Uh, Damn. Get, remove, and set. Uh, yeah, and yeah, we can just override, or we can just extend that uh, class and implement these methods with our own functionality. So um, you could, for example, you could add a Redis database. Um, Redis is a key, uh, key value store, which would probably be suitable very well for this propose so this is a database a persistent database where you can set uh, values uh, corresponding to keys yeah, it's basically what we have here but not only in memory but persistent um, but for now we're gonna take a, a little simpler approach we what I what I'm going to show you now is how to implement a persistent or an in-memory storage with a which is kind of persistent in the way that if the application is closed, everything from the memory is stored into just a plain file, and if the bot is started again, everything is read from that file into the memory back. So basically, we have a in-memory storage, but um, with the advantage that it is persistent over restarts from the uh, from the bot. Oh, and
and there's one more thing. Um, we did a mistake. So um, I thought uh, parse it would throw an error if uh, it cannot parse the the string, but actually it returns uh, it returns n a n, so not a number. So we changed that. I need to change that here. Um, we say index equals parse int, and then uh, if is not a number, uh, not a number index. We're gonna return this, and otherwise everything is fine. And now, if we test that, um, and we add foo, we add bar, we get our to do's, and then do check. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, right. Cool. Uh, if we pass an invalid parameter, it says. So, and what is if we? Oh, I think we haven't covered that case yet. If we type an index which we don't have, so if we type like to check to do, and what does it say now? Uh, get, and they're already here. But we should probably return an error message in that case. So uh, let's see if index uh, is greater or equal than uh, to do dot length. We take exactly that one and also return an invalid message. Let's check that quickly. Uh, add foo. Add bar, get, and check uh, two. Yeah, very nice. And check one still works. Cool. Okay. Right. So now let's uh, let's get to the persistence uh, stuff. Um, so we first need to, as they uh, as they said here, we need to extend the base storage. So I'm I'm, call, uh, I'm creating another folder which I call adapters, and right in there I'm creating a new file which I call persistent persistent memory storage. All right, it uses the strict mode, and need to import the not the sorry constant telegram talking and coding at the same time. <laughs> uh, constant telegram require yeah require our library again. Um, telegram notebot I think it's called. Notebot. Let me check that. Yeah. Alright. And so now just wait a moment. Alright I'm back. So yeah, we need to define a class, uh, which is called yeah, as a file persistent memory storage, and it extends the Telegram dot base storage class. Um, we define a constructor function with no parameters for now. It first calls the super constructor, um, and yeah, that should be fine for now. And now we need the methods get, set, and uh, what was it? Remove. So get, and as we can see here, it takes uh, two parameters: the storage and the key. So what is the storage? Um, the library distinguishes between user storage and chat storage, and uh, this is relevant if you're in a group chat. So when you're in a group chat and a user sends a message, um, you can refer to the user who actually sent the message or the chat from which the message came and um, the library distinguishes into uh, user sessions and um, chat sessions but uh, currently we're only using user sessions uh, but um, yeah probably the bot wouldn't work in group chats that well oh yeah it would because uh, to do's are or, or it would work in a way that to do's are safe for the specific user and not group wide to do's uh, but that's okay for now and we just, but we we also implement the the chat session way here in our um, in our storage class. So get storage key, and um, yeah, we just use we're just using a an inner memory model, 
So uh, we need to define. Oh yeah, we need to define a our store, our in-memory store, and therefore we say this dot storage, and this is an object now. And just as I said, user, we say user storage. This equals an empty object and chat or net user or let's call it session uh, chat session or let's call it storage chat storage and it's an for now it's an empty object we replace that in a few moments and we this needs to return I don't know is it documented here uh, yeah it returns a promise so we return a new promise. Uh, resolve and reject. Um, and we'll pass this dot storage of uh, yeah the red storage. So if storage is oh yeah we of we need to we 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 also have actually to name it that way. So if the storage is Either user storage or chat storage. Either this one or that one is accessed here, and uh, the next index is the key, and we're gonna return that. Or in case it isn't defined, we just return an empty object. So this is the get part. Uh, now we need to implement the set part. It takes uh, three parameters. Again, the storage, either chat storage or user storage, the key and the data to to be set. So storage key and data and in this case we yeah we just add another item to our in memory storage object so um, we need to return a promise resolve reject reject oh actually we don't reject anything so we can let remove here we only resolve maybe with an empty object but we're resolving always so resolve and we're saying this dot storage from the respective storage here, and key, and set the and set this to uh, data, and then resolve the whole thing. So I don't know. This should be pretty straightforward. Nothing, nothing special here. We we just setting data to an object. So and remove is pretty straight straightforward too. Um, just copy that, we return another promise um, and we're gonna say delete that one and yeah resolve. So, so far so good um, and now we want to introduce the part where the data gets stored to a file and read back from a file and we first for simplicity we just created f the folder for the files for the persistence files just right here in the project and I'm co gonna call it data and in there I'm gonna do two uh, two files which is uh, user storage dot json we're gonna s for simplicity we just saw them at json uh, because yeah we already already have json here and uh, we can just serialize it to a text file so of course this is not very efficient or performant but um, yeah it's simple for now and it gives you the basic ideas and another object chat storage dot json and by default they're containing an empty object so they could be parsed. Um, right. So now let's extend our constructor to take two parameters, namely the user storage path and the jet storage path. So that uh, this class can read those two files and already uh, and also save uh, data to them. And we need uh, let me let me guess. Okay. We re do require and then um, user storage path and here we require oh, the chat, chat search path and what this will do so this is a very cool feature if we do require on a JSON file it will automatically parse that JSON file and return the object um, as a, as response or as a return value to the require command so if we do this and this one refers to a JSON file, to a valid JSON file. This will contain the parse content of the JSON file, which is uh, pretty cool. And if otherwise, if I don't know if this is not a JSON file or the JSON file is invalid, 
um, probably an exception will be thrown. So, all right. So what do we next? Um, next we um, we implement another meth method which we call flush. And what this what uh, this method will do is it will uh, write data to the file. So if we initialize the class, the data is read from the file, and then we also need a method to write data to the file. And here we need to uh, we need to require the fs package, which stands for file system, which is a package in Node with which you can uh, yeah do file operations. And we're gonna to gonna do two things: uh, write file sync. We can do it synchronously here because we we only will call this method only once, namely in the case uh, the program is shut down. So right before shutting down the program, this method will be called later. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the only time the method will be called. So we don't need to care about performance here. So we can do it synchronously for simplicity. User storage path. We're gonna write to that path, and we gonna write the stringified version of this dot storage dot user storage. And the same same thing for uh, chat storage. And yeah, that should be good. We need to, to export export module that export persistent memory storage. Need to export a class. And oh yeah, and I just copied that, so we don't have this object on on the on the class yet. So we need to we only have it available here. So the, the user storage path and the chat storage storage path is um, passed as parameters. But they're only available inside the constructor, so we need to define them and or need to copy them to the to the class object to the this object. This dot user storage path uh, equals user storage path, and the same thing for chat chat store oh damn store reg chat storage and oh damn. Jet storage, user storage. All right, this should be fine, I think. Cool. So, uh, so far to that class, and now we need to use it in our in our actual bot. And to do this, um, we first need to require it. So we're gonna say persist. Let me just copy that. Persistent blah 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 equals, and then. Uh, it is placed under adapter, so we do adapter slash this, um, and then we're gonna initialize it, actually, or uh, not initialize, but instantiate. So storage equals new persistent memory storage, and now we need to pass uh, these two parameters, which are the path to our to our two uh, storage files. So we're gonna say. We're gonna say uh, no. We need to use the uh, the dear name global constant because oh, because um, if we refer to um, dot slash data from here, it's not the same as referring from as referring to dot slash data from this class because this class is inside the adapters folder and it would be dot slash dot dot slash data um, and we're using the dear name to have a uh, to have an absolute to have an absolute path so dear name slash data slash user storage json actually you don't need json or I don't know let's add it um, and the second parameter is chat storage and then to add our storage or to replace the default in memory storage of our bot we uh, with our persistent memory storage we define another option which is called storage and we set it to our storage class or to our storage instance uh, so far so good um, one more thing we defined this uh, flush method here but we don't call it anywhere currently so uh, we need to and and as I said we want to call this method only once right when the bot is shutting down or when it crashes or when it yeah when the program shuts uh, when the program shuts down and um, 
there's a little, uh, I just copied that here, this exit handler. And what this does is, um, right when uh, the process detects a sigint command or an uncaught exception, it will call this method. And only after this method had been uh, executed, then the process is actually um, determined, uh, not determined, ter uh, terminated. Okay, uh, so, um, and as you can see here, we're doing storage.flush, and uh, the storage is the storage we defined up here, and we're doing storage.flush right before we exit. So let's try that. Um, add foo. Oh, yeah, and we. And we got an exception. Path must be a string. Um, in flush. Uh, why flush? It shouldn't call flush. Oh, yes, it should call flush, but. This that uses store oh yeah storage path and here but uh, yeah it caught flush because it had crashed but why did it crash? Uh, damn. All right, let me just check that. Oh uh, yeah, I found the I found the mistake. Um, we're not returning a new promise here. We're returning just the promise class, but not a new promise. So that was the problem. Um, and let's start our bot again. All right, added a new to do. Get foo. Let's add another one, which is called bar. Uh, get the list foo bar. And now, if we shut down our bot and then look into user storage, uh, there it is. As you can see, it has written the file. All right, and actually, that's all. Um, we implemented our uh, to do bot, and uh, yeah. Basically, we're en at the end of this tutorial. Um, there's one more thing. Um, if you add your bot to the bot father, um, you can I don't know how this is it how it is called. Um, you can set yeah you can set commands. So you need to manually tell the bot father which commands your bot does expose. So r when you we have implemented those commands now, uh, which are uh, yeah which are add uh, get and check, then we can. Um, then you can add them to the bot folder to tell it um, to tell it which commands are available and to make them uh, yeah here uh, to make them appear in this list so that the user actually knows which commands are available and you can also set a description at the bot folder with the, the uh, set description command so uh, there you can put a uh, yeah kind of a description on how to use your bot which commands are available which parameters you need to pass and stuff like that all right um yeah thank you for watching this uh, tutorial and of course as you can see this uh, bot is only very 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 basic it only barely scratches the surface of what is possible with the uh, telegram bots um for example as i showed you before these buttons we can use these buttons uh, to do a better interaction or to have a better user experience than uh, t typing these commands or you could also use these inline buttons or you can use uh, the inline mode this is another feature of telegram bots you can type add and then I don't know gif and then you can search for gifs like funny and then you can write from the right from the message input you can add these gifs to the, mes uh, to the mes uh, message and yeah all these uh, things are realizable with bots uh, but uh, I think it's uh, too much for this tutorial now so um, but if you want to I can do tutorial more tutorials on more advanced stuff with the uh, telegram bots and uh, yeah things might include uh, or things to things to cover in further tutorials might include as I said these button button stuff um, this inline stuff uh, then you could do what else could we do? We could implement bots in different languages. So if you don't like Node.js but like to make a bot in Java or something like that, um, I could also do a tutorial on that. So I could offer, I could offer building a bot in uh, either Node, which we have done right now, or Java or Go or PHP. So uh, these are the languages I could uh, do tutorials in. Um, and more advanced stuff includes also like um, you might have heard from Lewis, which is a framework from Microsoft. Um, let me. Oh yeah, that is. So. 
So the page has finished loading now. Um, so what is Lewis? Uh, Lewis is a framework from Microsoft which uses machine learning technology to uh, to recognize or to understand natural language. So currently we're using these commands in this bot, and these commands are not that uh, yeah that fancy. But uh, what what would be more more cool would be to have yeah to actually talk in natural language to the bot like uh, the Google Assistant does it or. Yeah, there are some other bots who, who actually are able to perform natural language now. And uh, yeah, this uh, Lewis is a framework from Microsoft to process such language and to map uh, th uh, certain sentences to certain commands and something like that. And another another uh, solution or another other service to do this is API.ai and basically it's uh, pretty much the same as uh, Lewis and it, yeah, as you can see here, you can uh, talk in, uh, in in English sentences, and it uh, analyzes the sentences and uh, suggests an action the bot should perform. All right, so uh, what else is there? I don't know. So, yeah, if you got any questions or any requests for further tutorials on Telegram bots, uh, please let me know. And of course, please give me feedback on my tutorial. This was my first programming tutorial. Uh, please let me know if you liked it or if you didn't like it. What you what I should do better, and um, I don't know. Is there something else I would say? Another yeah, another thing uh, we could do in a further tutorial is to to uh, yeah to add an actual database like I said Redis or uh, MySQL or something like that. And um, yeah, I think. Uh, I think I think I'm looking I'm looking to my notes right now if I missed anything. Uh but yeah, I think I covered everything. So, thank you for watching. Uh please give me feedback and uh yeah, thank you. Bye.